Good morning, Texas High School Percussionists. My name is George Nixon. I am the principal percussionist of the Dallas Symphony Orchestra, and I'm also an adjunct faculty member at Southern Methodist University. Today I'm going to talk to you about the two mallet excerpts or selections that are required for this year's All-State Audition, and I wish you all very good luck in preparing them. Uh, you'll see me in a few different settings, um, as you can imagine, during this COVID pandemic. It's a little bit tricky to find uh, rehearsal or recording space all at the same time. Um, so I'm coming to you today from the Dallas Symphony's percussion room. Um, and I want to talk to you a little bit about some pointers and some helpful tips for the Handel Sonata, which is the two mallet selection this year. Um, one thing that's important to note, it asks for a lot of rolls, for everything above a quarter note to be rolled, and really making those fluid and connected, not uh, separating each role from one another will really help to make a nice, beautiful musical line and phrase. And you may notice that I'm changing my roll speed slightly. So when I'm rolling softer, I'm rolling slower. And as I get faster, I get louder. So. So as that happens across a musical line, I don't just have one roll, but I'm connecting them smoothly hand to hand and making sure that as much as possible, my stickings are helping me to be nice and smooth between those notes. Um, another thing is changing your stroke type for different colors. You'll see a lot of the notes have dots on them, meaning they're staccato, nice and separated. So we're really going to be try to be nice and lifted and out of the instrument for a nice, bright, clean sound instead of a darker, not a legato sound that would be down into the instrument more. Uh, that kind of sound will reserve for the long legato passages. Um, so just, just to show you what I mean, I'll play the first few bars. nice and short. Another thing, um, around say letter B, um, I see a lot of times people arriving at a certain dynamic and staying there, where we want to continue those crescendos and continue showing the musical phrase going forward. So when we, when we don't want it to be flat, but rather we want it to have a propulsive kind of cyclical, nice phrased quality to it. So each beat of the 16th notes has a nice round shape. So on and so forth. Um, I hope those pointers help you out. Obviously, it's a really tricky etude also to play in time with all the right notes and get through cleanly. But what, once you are at that point, I encourage you to try and make it the most musical thing possible. Um, we're really trying to recreate the idea um, that a violinist would be playing this originally. So thinking about those bow strokes and how beautifully legato a violin can play compared to you know our just normal strokes, which we've got to really try to find as much beauty as possible in those.
For this year's four ballad etude, Mystic Fire by Julie Davila, one of the things that's critically important about this selection is paying close attention to the notes that are accented and the notes that are not accented. We'll really be looking for a lot of difference um, between accent and unac unaccented notes um, because that really helps to bring out the musical line and the melody. <laughs> notes so the F's in the first few measures the high F's we really don't need too much of them so that we can really clearly hear what the melody is <laughs> paying close attention to the duration of the rest there at the end making sure it's exactly two beats long we all kind of have the tendency to make our rests a little too short so you'll want to sing back four eighth notes uh, right there through that rest <laughs> to make sure we get right through that. Um, when you're playing the fifths and fourths a little later on um, and you're moving around the instrument, body positioning is going to be very important. We want to make sure we're in a, kind of what I call a neutral, grounded space um, so we can really reach what we need to reach at the right times. So you don't want to be leaning too far down here and really have to reach up here. You want to be um, on your feet, have a spread stance so that you can really easily move between um, the different spots on the instrument. Later on in the 12-8 section, when it gets a little faster um, at measure 40, uh, it's really important for us when the melody comes in at measure 44, for us to not have too much of the repeated F octaves in the right hand. That is not the most important musical line, but it is the one because it's higher in the, on the instrument might want to jump out and be louder. We really want to make sure that that, that is the main line. Um, and also we want to make sure that this line is really nicely rounded and beautifully phrased, not just feeling like single notes, but they're all connected with one another. Mm -hmm.